We're about to kick down the doors and go inside of the C-suite of Nzinga Melu, who is the Chief Executive Officer of African Regional Management. We're going in. I am completely intrigued and fascinated by your journey from Zambia to having this position now where you sort of look after a lot of the big, big decision making uh, outside of South Africa, dealing with boards and government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a, quite a journey. It has, it has. I mean, to be honest, because if you look at where I started from, I'm one of those bankers who've risen through the ranks, where, you know, I started as a management trainee and just worked through the ranks until I got to, to where I am now. So it's been a very humbling experience, but very exciting. The pressures do come. I mean, if you look back, I was the first woman uh, CEO for Standard Chartered. Um, uh, I was the first woman CEO in Zambia. Uh, you know, I was the first <laughs> woman uh, CEO outside the region to win the Forbes uh, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, award. So I, I think with all that comes a sense of responsibility that this is how, something that you must do well because the future generations are looking up to you. But then again, it's something that you don't do it because you are a woman. You just do it because it's the right thing to do. And I was brought up by my dad, who was a farmer, uh, you know, and an ex-cop. So we're always working hard was just part of what we did. Wow. Uh, having a lot of brothers around me. I've got a lot of brothers around me. I've got a lot of sisters around me. So coming from a big family, it kind of comes naturally that, you know, you just have to find your space all the time and work hard. So yeah, it, it, it's always, always interesting. Did you have men mentors? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, because being the first, I can't imagine there weren't yeah. many women to call. Yeah, uh, yeah. What type of mentors did you look for yeah. when you were... I mean, if you look at uh, the banking sector, you have some, you've had some very powerful women who've done great things well ahead of me, you know, you've got uh, some notable women like for example Dolly Cabanda, she used to work for Barclays uh, and then she worked for IFC and then now she had some major organizations around and you know you have women who you can talk to and can relate to and can say you know what in the corporate world this is just how things you know are done and these are challenges that you face but then equally in the home situation you know you've got your sisters and you've got your brothers sure. and then you've got your friends as well so sure. mentors are very important when when you're rising in any organizations that's something that you cannot do without what are some of the strategic things you guys are doing to sort of into stakeholder relations yeah yeah so you see for me when i look at africa rising africa opportunity regardless of the different challenges the continent faces Africa will always have the great opportunities. Africa will always be the continent to go to. If you just look at how China is coming in, how Europe is continuing to come in, how the US and everything. So, so number one, in terms of the way we position ourselves, we position ourselves very much as we are in the land of the opportunity where things will continue to happen. Customers will continue to come in, investors will continue to come in. Our strategy, we look at various sectors that respond not to what Barclays wants to do, but what our customers are expecting. Ah, I see. Yeah, so what our customers are expecting. If you look at the mining sector, the mining sector, yes, the commodity prices are going down now, but for us, it's what role do we play to respond and support to our clients who are in the mining sector, whether it's in Botswana, whether it's in Ghana, whether it's in Zambia, the mining sector is huge for us. Agriculture, that's the engine of growth. When you talk to any big stakeholder for us, whether it's the government, whether it's the regulators, they will always talk about what are banks doing to support the economies in growing the agriculture sector. God. You know, so I think agriculture is really the future uh, of the African continent. What are some of the things you really look for if someone wants to be on your team? Look, my, you know, I always say the bank standards are very high. Banking itself, you know, I always say if somebody wants to work, you know, hard and have, you know, really high productivity and see results, work in a bank. But you know, work in an international bank that is like Barclays. Number one, we're fully global, fully regional, fully local. So you have to be able to know how to connect the dots. You, you, you can't just think in a box and think, okay, this is what I have to do 
in South Africa and that's what it's all about mm. or in Uganda. It's you thinking the type of clients that you are, that you are serving are global clients who probably got head offices in Europe and have regional offices maybe in Nairobi and are doing business with you here in South Africa. So you've got to map so you've all got, of these yes, you've got, together. You, you, you have to have a team that is dynamic, that is not just going to do what they're told. You know, Steve Jobs once says, don't hire intelligent people and tell them what to do because they won't want to work for you. I love that. You know? I love that. Now, for the young professional woman out there coming up through the ranks, mm -hmm. who has a dream of being where you are, yeah. seeing himself sort of as a power player on this continent, mm -hmm. being able to deal with boards and heads of state, mm -hmm. give us her advice, a couple, maybe two things that she has to think about mm -hmm. if she wants to get to this level. So I think, I mean, when you look at what women who are coming up, the organization, I think in my view, need to continue doing different, because I think we have a lot of um, intelligent women on the continent. I, I think firstly, I look at the fact that everything is possible. I say, if I can do it, anybody can do it. But I think when I look at my journey, and I look at the journey of many other successful women, they've been able to take a lot of risks as they're growing in the organization, being able to do things that are different. Okay. Yeah, so I think there's power in difference. There's okay. power in difference, yeah, being okay. different. Whether it's difference in the teams that you build around you in terms of diversity, or whether it's difference in the type of roles that you do, or whether it's difference in just thinking, maybe I don't have to work in my country, I can go and work somewhere else. So there's a lot of risk and diversity that I think women need to do for them to actually do well. Because by doing that, you, which is my next point, you actually build very strong networks. Your network is your net worth. I see. Because the bigger the network that you have, you know, the bigger the net worth that you have. Because then you're able to call on people, whether it's your customers, you need that one network to be able to connect your dots. Whether it's your staff, you're looking for good people, you need that one network. Whether it's just, who am I going to play golf with? You need that network. So I think that, for me, we sometimes underestimate the power of network because we just think it's important to know the people you've always known. Sure. But the power is in how do I get to know new people in my career and how do I build that to actually help me take to, the, to go to the next level.